The movie begins with a thrilling moment, where a young doctor is standing on the edge of a tall building. He looks very dizzy, about to faint, and suddenly, he falls from the rooftop. Next, we find ourselves at a university where a teacher named Dr. Nisha talks about insomnia, a condition that makes it hard for people to sleep. She explains that if someone suffers from insomnia for a long time, it can have serious effects on their health. Dr. Nisha shares that not getting enough sleep can lead to many problems, and in the worst cases, it can cause people to see things that aren't there, known as hallucinations. Then, we meet our protagonist, Jane, who is a student at the same medical school where Dr. Nisha teaches. Jane lives with her sister and their elderly grandmother. She confesses that she has insomnia and struggles to sleep most nights. Jane also has OCD, which means she feels the need to check the locks on the doors over and over, even when she knows they are locked. Her daily routine includes studying late into the night, often until 2 a.m., or preparing breakfast for her family before anyone wakes up. Jane has all 24 hours in a day to herself, but her sister, June, seems a bit strange and doesn't pay much attention to Jane. One day, Jane visits Dr. Nitsch's office to ask for a withdrawal from school because she is struggling financially. Dr. Nitsch tries to convince her to stay and suggests that Jane join a study program at a German pharmaceutical company where she could earn a lot of money. Excited about the opportunity, Jane agrees and heads to the company called Deep to learn more about the project. When Jane arrives, she receives basic information about the study, which has three levels. The goal is to stay awake for several days to help the body produce a chemical called serotonin. After a video explaining this, a man enters and continues to talk about how important serotonin is. He tells Jane that if she decides to join the study, she must keep it a secret. Jane agrees, especially when she hears about the good pay for minimal effort. Next. The man takes Jane to another room, where he injects a tiny chip into the back of her neck and gives her a watch that shows her serotonin levels. He warns her that once her serotonin reaches 100%, she must come back to have the chip removed. Just as she is about to leave, the man mentions a crucial detail. If she falls asleep for even 60 seconds, the chip will stop her heart. He reassures her that the watch will wake her up before that happens. Jane goes home and starts her first day without sleep. Since she is used to not sleeping for at least three days, the first night is relatively relatively easy for her. She follows her usual routine and begins studying. However, when she checks on her grandmother, she finds her on the floor. Jane worries, but soon realizes her grandmother was just looking for something under the bed. After helping her grandmother, Jane notices her sister, June, arriving in a stranger's car. When Jane asks who she came with, they end up arguing, and Jane accidentally breaks June's phone. The next day, while at the university cafeteria, a boy named Wynne, who loves to party, approaches Jane. He is also part of the study and tells her that they are not alone. Other students are wearing the deep watch too. Among them is Sin, an influencer who is studying medicine against her will, causing her a lot of stress and sleepless nights. There's also Peach, a gamer who follows Sin everywhere. They all sit together, and it seems that Peach is the only one scared about the risks of the study. Jane comforts him and Wynne suggests they help each other reach 100% serotonin. They decide to share their numbers to achieve this goal. Together, they manage to earn their first payment and buy things they've wanted. To celebrate, they have a small party, but Sin mentions feeling like someone has been following her since the study began. Jane changes the subject and asks if they plan to sign up for level two. Everyone sees the study program as an easy way to make money, so they are excited to move forward. They toast to their friendship, but Jane has to stick to her routine, so she heads home and the others do the same. Later, Jane decides to buy her sister a new phone to apologize for breaking the old one. However, she learns that Wynne also has family issues, as he doesn't get along with his father. Eventually, they all return to Deep to find out what level two involves. The man explains that for this level, they must stay awake for five days, but they will earn five times more money than before. At first, they hesitate, but the promise of money convinces them to join. Everything goes smoothly until the third day, when things start to go wrong. Peach accidentally falls asleep for a few seconds, and Wynne begins to have hallucinations about a classmate insulting his mother, who passed away. Jane also experiences some strange feelings, but they seem minor until she has a hallucination in class, where she sees her grandmother dead. Feeling exhausted and overwhelmed, they gather together in the cafeteria, tired of the study, but unable to quit. Jane realizes that Wynne has the highest serotonin level, so they let him lead them to ensure everyone's levels rise. Wynne organizes a party at Peach's house, 
where everyone is having a great time, and it seems their plan is working. Jane asks June to take care of their grandmother for the night so she can enjoy the party. The party continues until they start to feel tired and begin chatting. Wynne asks Jane about her parents, which reminds her of a new story about a couple who were murdered. Wynne quickly brings her back to the moment and they continue their conversation. He then shares that his mother died, but insists it's not a big deal. To keep the fun going, Wynne mixes some questionable pills into their drinks, claiming they will help them stay awake. At first, Jane is unsure because she is a top student and knows it's risky. However, she eventually gives in when she sees Wynne taking them, and soon, the effects kick in, allowing them to dance and enjoy the party. As the party goes on, Jane, feeling a bit tipsy, unexpectedly kisses Wynne, but afterward, she can't remember what happened. Everything seems to be going well until Sin decides to use the bathroom. Instead of finding a restroom, she accidentally walks into Peach's bedroom. However, what she finds makes her uncomfortable. Inside, she discovers a treasure trove of items and photos of herself, which makes her realize that Peach has been secretly watching her. Shocked and frightened, Sin faints, and Peach quickly finds her, bringing the others along. They soon realize that Sin isn't breathing, and panic sets in as they rush to help her. After some tense moments, they finally manage to revive her, but the traumatic experience scares them enough that they all agree to stop the experiment and not proceed to level three. Once they return to their daily lives, Peach tries to apologize to Sin, but Sin sees him as dangerous and refuses to be friends with him anymore. Meanwhile, Wynne expresses his feelings for Jane, but she turns him down, explaining that she needs to focus on her family. She also notices that her grades have slipped because of the deep experiment so she has to concentrate on her studies even more. The next day, Jane arrives at school and sees a crowd around an ambulance. As she gets closer, she learns that a student has died, and she notices that the student is wearing a deep watch that same night. When Jane goes to check on her grandmother, she finds her unresponsive and rushes her to the hospital. The doctors inform her that her grandmother has a serious illness that requires immediate surgery, but they don't have enough money to cover the costs. To Jane's surprise, her sister June has an envelope full of cash, revealing that she also took part in the deep experiment. Jane warns her sister about the dangers, but June gets angry and storms off. While Jane deals with her issues, Wynne fights with his father, blaming him for his mother's death. He believes that if his father had been braver, his mother would still be alive. Later, Jane returns home looking for June, but can't find her. Worried, she heads to the deep lab and finds June there, but it's too late. June has already had a new chip implanted in her neck. She pleads with the doctor to stop what he's doing, and even threatens to sue the company. However, the man in charge tells Jane that he won't remove the chip unless she brings her friends and they finish level three. I'm not going to remove the chip from your sister, and that means she's going to die. Soon having no choice, Jane asks for help from her friends, but Peach doesn't want to risk his life, and Sin thinks it's unfair for everyone to endanger themselves for Jane's sister. However, Wynne, feeling a sense of loyalty to Jane, decides to help her despite the danger. The sisters go back to the hospital to check on their grandmother, and June apologizes for her reckless decision. Jane understands that without the money from Deep, their grandmother would still be in bad shape. Meanwhile, Peach and Sin realize that even though they've only known each other for a short time, their friendship is worth the risk. So the next day, when Jane and Wynne are at the lab, Peach and Sin show up to help them complete the third level. They come up with a plan and ask Dr. Niksha for assistance. She agrees to give them a drug that will keep them awake and energized, and she allows them to stay in her father's old lab. The first two days pass without any problems, and they carry on with their regular routines. However, by the third night, staying awake becomes tough. Peach starts to experience hallucinations, hearing the sounds of gunfire from video games and imagining himself standing on the edge of a terrace, ready to jump. Sin notices sudden breakouts on her face, and Jane hears disturbing news about her parents' murder, envisioning her sister lying dead on the floor. Thankfully, Jane's sister helps pull them back to reality, but Sin is still worried about her appearance and wants to leave. Wynne tries to calm her down, but Sin blames him for always following Jane's lead, saying Jane will never return his feelings. Wynne gets upset and ends up insulting both Sin and Peach 
while Peach tries to keep the peace. In a moment of frustration, Jane tries to call Dr. Nikcha for help, but when she doesn't answer, Jane decides to search for her. However, she stumbles upon a room filled with cameras and realizes they have been watched the entire time. She also discovers documents related to the Deep organization and finds out that Dr. Nikcha hired an actor to pretend to be the face of the experiment. Just then, Dr. Nietzsche appears, but Jane manages to escape and rush back to warn the others that Dr. Nietzsche is behind everything. They try to call the police, but there's no signal, and they find the door is locked. On day seven, Sin takes matters into her own hands and destroys all the security cameras in the room. The first to fall asleep is Win, and after 60 seconds, Dr. Nietzsche opens the door to collect him, thinking that he has passed away. However, this turns out to be a trap by the group. While she is focused on the microchip, Win suddenly wakes up and knocks her out. At that moment, the others arrive and explain that they found a drug that can simulate a heart attack. They confront Dr. Nietzsche, and she finally reveals the truth behind all the studies she's been doing. It was because of her husband Jed, the man she loves, a man who once experimented with staying awake for too long, which led him to jump from a building. Although he survived, he fell into a coma, and Dr. Nietzsche discovered that by giving him serotonin, she could revive him. But she needed many human subjects because her own serotonin levels were insufficient. She even shows them the scars of the implant from times when she repeatedly experimented on herself. After that, they all feel bad for her, and as they corner Dr. Nietzsche, contemplating what to do, she spots an anesthetic drug, grabs a syringe, and injects Jane with a deadly substance. Thankfully, since they are medical students in a hospital, they have everything they need to bring her back to life, but nothing seems to work initially. Meanwhile, a fight ensues between the doctor and Wynne. She attempts to stab him with another anesthetic, but Sin comes to his rescue just in time to knock out Dr. Nietzsche. Finally, Jane is revived when her sister delivers a strong hit to her chest and everyone is relieved. After that, Dr. Nietzsche is arrested. As the movie approaches its end, we see that Sin has decided to drop out of studying medicine so that she can follow her influencing and streaming dream. As for Wynne, he has reconciled with his father and faced him with vulnerability and openness. The sisters, Jane and June, also revive their relationship as siblings and help each other grow. In the meantime, Wynne seems to be winning over Jane's heart, and they are upgrading their friendship, taking it to the next level.